Hi friends, welcome to our channel Global Health Helpline. Today we will learn about a homeopathic medicine coccus cacti from the book Lectures on Homeopathic Metaria Medica by James Tyler Kent. Please subscribe our channel to be connected with us and give a like to this video. Let's begin. Coccus cacti. There is a little remedy and will be a relief after the study of so many difficult ones. With full approving it will doubtless show itself a deep-acting constitutional remedy. Although it has cured some deep-seated chronic troubles, it has been used chiefly in acute affections. This is only because of the scantiness of its provings and our lack of knowledge concerning it in a general way. Very few mental symptoms have been brought out. Its use, so far as demonstrated, is mostly in cataral conditions of the air passages, and whooping cough, with copious, ropey, jelly-like mucus. Great quantities of this mucus form in the nose, in the throat, in the air passages generally, and in the vagina. The routine practitioner, whenever B sees thick, ropey, gelatinous mucus, thinks only of Kali Bikram. That comes from the study of key notes. But it must be remembered that other remedies besides Kali Bikram have this. Cough. Spasmodic cough, whooping cough, the cough of drunkards. The chronic cataral state of the coccus cacti patient comes on especially in the winter. It comes on when the cold weather begins and lasts till the warm weather comes. The patient is cold, and his complaints come on in cold weather. He is sensitive to cold, easily takes cold. But you must distinguish between the patient himself and his complaints, because they are entirely opposite to each other. When he once becomes sick from exposure to cold, he is always worse in a warm room and better in the cold air. His cough is brought on in a warm room, from being too warm in bed, from drinking warm things. It is better from drinking cold things in a cold room, worse from exertion, from getting heated up, from becoming warm, that is, after the complaint has once set in, it reverses itself. This is not unlike many other remedies. I have received many letters from doctors, saying, why is it that in your repertory and in burning houses, certain remedies are put down as better from cold and worse from cold? They certainly cannot have both. But they do have both, sometimes under different conditions and sometimes under the same conditions. Sometimes these are primary, sometimes they are secondary symptoms. A remedy must be examined to ascertain how it is that these circumstances can be the very opposite of each other. But commonly burning house and registers both those things that belong to particulars and those things that belong to generals, and if the symptom, in his judgment, is strikingly worse by a certain circumstance, even if it is the very opposite of the general, he had that symptom in bold-faced type. Phosphorus is a good illustration of what we have been talking about. If you make a careful study of phosphorus you will see that the complaints of the chest are all worse from cold, from cold air and from being cold. He catches cold and it settles in the chest, and the cough and irritation in the chest are worse from cold and being exposed to cold air. But he wants cold things in the stomach. His stomach feels better from cold things. Let him have head trouble and his head is better from cold, he wants cold things in his stomach. If he has stomach trouble, it is made worse by anything hot, he wants cold water to drink, and as soon as it gets warm, he vomits it up. You see phosphorus is worse from cold and worse from heat. The pains in the extremities are better from heat. The chronic cough, as has been said, is likely to begin with cold weather and last all winter, with a copious formation of mucus in the chest. It is a spasmodic cough, forcing the patient into the most violent efforts. The face becomes purple. Finally he retches and vomits long strings of tough, ropey mucus filling the mouth and throat and causing him to choke. This is due to the fact that the mucus is so tenacious that it cannot be ejected from the pharynx in the usual way, therefore he must vomit. Now, there is a striking feature of this remedy. Anything coming in contact with the pharynx, the inside of the mouth, or even the gums, produces gagging and retching and will bring on the cough. 
chest. We find this in the chronic states of sensitive persons, who are unable to brush the teeth or rinse the mouth without gagging and sometimes vomiting. There is a general hyperesthesia of the skin and mucous membranes. Sensitive to the pressure of the clothing. With the chest troubles there is much dyspnea. He cannot walk without bringing on difficult breathing. He cannot ascend a height without suffocation. After the quantities of mucus are cleared out the cough is better and he goes on for two, three or four hours, when another one of these awful attacks comes on. They are apt to be worse at night when he becomes warm in bed. If he can lie in a cool room without much covering he will go longer without coughing. The whooping cough is of a similar character. You will see the child lying in bed with the covers off. It wants the room cold, and the mother will tell you that if she can get to it quickly enough with a drink of cold water she can ward off the paroxysm. The chest fills up with mucus until respiration cannot be carried on any longer and it must be cleared out, yet the child will resist and hold its breath to prevent coughing. You will be astonished to see how speedily coccus cacti will change the character of that cough. One of the earliest signs of improvement will be observed in the easier respiration. The cough becomes less violent, the retching passes away, and in a week or ten days the cough will go too. Cough worse after eating, worse on waking, worse in a warm room. In the early stages of whooping cough carbo veg will develop and bring out the symptoms and furnish a good picture for a second prescription, even if it does not cure. Discharge of thick yellow mucus from the nose, nose stopped up, with inclination to sneeze. Great dryness of the nose. The air passages burn after the mucus has been cleared away. The chest burns from the mere exhaling of air. Sore throat with redness. Tickling in the throat. Sensation of a hair or crumb lodged in the throat behind the larynx. Forces very sensitive. Arch of palate and forces, as far as visible, very red. Burning in the throat aggravate in the warmth, especially when warmed up in bed, aggravate from warm drinks, though hot drinks are not so bad. Better from cold drinks. If the patient gets warm in bed or the room gets warm he commences to clutch the larynx and cough. The slightest touch on the palate or even the gums in examination of the throat will cause gagging sometimes when the parts look normal. He cannot hawk without gagging. On swallowing food sometimes it will come right back again and cause gagging and retching. Great thirst, wants water often and in large quantities. Nauseous taste in the mouth, never rid of it. Nausea in the throat. Vomiting of white, bitter tasting froth. Toothache, sudden drawing pains in the teeth, worse from cold and from touch. Mind. The mental symptoms are chiefly depression and anxiety. Great sadness. A cloud seems to hang over everything. Apprehensiveness. Especially at 2 to 4 a.m. This state may alternate with loquacity and liveliness, like lachesis. There are other symptoms worse after sleep, wakes in the morning with bacillar headache, or with headache in the forehead, aggravation mental exertion, after lying down, sometimes ameliorate from slow motion, aggravate on coughing and from exertion, ameliorate after sleep. Kidneys. A strong feature is its action on the kidneys, resembling acute parenchymatous nephritis. Albumin in the urine. Dark red sediment in the urine. Pain shooting from the kidney to the bladder and down the legs, aggravate from motion. Renal colic. Urging to urinate, but inability to pass urine until a large clot of blood has been passed. In coccus cacti the right side of the heart is affected, the vessels become friable and there is hemorrhage, oozing of blood, forming great black clots. The above symptom suggests a woman with uterine hemorrhage. There are hemorrhages of the uterus where the blood flows freely, coagulates slowly and does not form much of any clot in the vagina. But in this remedy the clots form very rapidly and the vagina becomes packed, and the bladder cannot be emptied until the clot is expelled. Uterine hemorrhage is a strong feature of this remedy. Copious, frequent, prolonged menstrual flow. Large, hard, black clots fill the uterus, are expelled by labor-like pains, and form again. 
inflammation of uterus and vagina, with copious, thick, white, jelly-like, ropey mucus. Soreness of the vulva, cannot bear the pressure of the clothing. Hemoptysis, dark, clotted less than from exertion. In the male there is impotence with dull pain in the loins. Dull pains in the region of the kidneys, with albuminuria, heavy sediment in the urine, etc., just such a state as you would find in a child that had taken. Thanks for watching full video. Please give a like to this video, comment us to improve our services, and share it for the help of people who do not know the proper homeopathy.